to know by the start of the 2018 season what is happening in 2019. Exactly. I think you can't go then, if there's going to be changes, major changes to how it's all going to flesh out, you don't want teams having that level of uncertainty, particularly in the top two divisions. Mm. Okay, the, 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 the support is so low for a large part of the League One clubs that those people that do go and watch them are resilient enough to these sort of things anyway yeah. and will find their way around it mm. as things go on. And that season starts a little bit later in the year. But for the top two divisions, we need to have some sort of understanding of where clubs will lie at the end of 2018 yeah. before the start of 2018. Yeah, to me, this is this buys them adequate time to prepare for any changes they might want to make. And if they manage their time properly and manage the decision-making process properly, because they're already out and about doing surveys of fans, so I'm sure they have the opportunity to get in the club's ears and figure out what could be, if any sort of structural change, be made for 2019. Yeah, I mean, it's something we can obviously have a conversation on uh, down the way. If people want to put their suggestions forward and stuff for what they want, yeah. um, that will be welcomed. I'll be doing a little blog with my suggestion my one man only sees this as the way forward suggestion, but I actually think we're in a position to implement it with clubs like Toronto, Toulouse, hypothetically someone like a New York, but really, you know, other full-time clubs mm. like Hull KR are already uh, in the championship. Because basically we've got 16 full-time clubs, as it sounds, haven't we? Yes. And the Bulls don't really count. Nope. But London, Hull KR, Toronto and Toulouse do. Well, there you go. So, um, yeah, look forward to that. for that one, can't Yeah, on superleaguepod.blogspot.co.uk. If I don't get it finished before I go away, then it'll be done on probably Friday. There you go. Okay. Salford halfback Michael Dobson will leave the Super League club at the end of the season to return to Australia. The 31-year-old joined the Red Devils from NRL side the Newcastle Knights in 2015. Dobson helped Salford survive the million pound game last term and reach the Challenge Cup semi-final for the first time in 20 years this season. I've been thinking about it for the last year. I've got a young family and it's time to take them home, he said. He's done a hell of a career playing, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, hasn't he, Michael Dobson? From his time with you guys to Hall KR to now at Salford and at Catalan Dragons as well. Yeah, I think the best thing you can say about him is all of his spells in the Northern Hemisphere has been crucial to his size. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, particularly, like you say, Hall KR. But even that year where he played a bit for Catalan and a bit for Wigan, his goal kicking for both sides was was, valu- was yeah. really valuable for them. Um, you know, he'll go down as a little bit of a... A minor hero at Wigan for that for that year actually that he came in and kicked some goals and played some half back for us. But he's been a really good player. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It sounds like his plan is to sort of play for some lower lower level club and earn his coaching stripes or get into rugby league development or something mm. somewhere in Australia. So I hope that works out for him. At thirty one, he's, he's still got something to give. He's still young, isn't he? But he's making a decision for his young family. So good luck to him as well. And, and you'd thank him for all his the years. He seems like he's been around for. Forever, doesn't it, really? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, fair play. Huddersfield Giants have signed Bradford Bulls star Colton Roach for the 2018 season, according to League Express. The versatile 24-year-old is set to become the latest Bradford player to make the switch across West Yorkshire when his contract with the Bulls ends at the culmination of this season. Roach is an Ireland international and can play centre or second row and has also had spells with Sheffield, York and Featherstone. He has been one of the standouts in a dreadful year for Bradford Bulls. And good luck to him. As he joins Huddersfield Town, uh, we continue to produce them for Huddersfield. Huddersfield Town. Yeah. Huddersfield Giants, even. There you go. If he turns out for Huddersfield Town, I'll be impressed. Yeah, we're coining it. Premier League salary. Yeah, right? like Christ, <laughs> life. Yeah, where would you, what position would you put? You have like? become the um, the Huddersfield Giants development I squad, know. haven't you? Which is a shame, really, because it seems like our academy is is, uh, is struggling at the minute in terms of the re- it requires improvement. Yeah. Clearly not in the eyes of Huddersfield Giants. Um, okay, stay with Huddersfield Giants, though, Mark. The uh, Giants captain, Leroy Cujo, has been granted a testimonial year uh, by the RFL. Cujo is an England international, joined Huddersfield in 2004 and has made nearly 300 appearances for the club and has 10 caps for his country. His testimonial is going to run all the way through 2018 with more plans expected to be announced later this year. Yeah, I think, you know, players with that sort of level of service deserve um, to have it celebrated. So getting a four-year testimonial is, is completely warranted for Good yeah. Joe. Great player for his club and a solid player for England Absolutely. on the occasions is the chance I'd say there you go Witness Vikings have signed back rower Sam Wilde from Warrington Wolves on a two year deal 
a traditional witness uh, activity that, but they've not been doing much of recently, uh, from 2018 following a successful month's loan this season. While is 21 and has played 34 times in total for the Wolves, Rochdale Hornets, witness and most recently the London Broncos where he's on loan. He made his debut for Warrington in 2015 and played in last season's grand final defeat by the Wigan Warriors. Yeah, for a young lad who's not played a lot of games, the games he has played in is Give, has given him good experience because I'm pretty oh, yeah. sure his debut was against Wigan in the Super 8s mm. um, in 2015. So, like, he's, you know, he's played in big games from the off, really. So, yeah, as long as he manages to not be injured like everyone else at Wakefield, <laughs> then he'll yeah. give him valuable depth in that well, squad. Well, if everyone else is injured at Wakefield, he'll be certainly getting in the team, won't he? Mm. Um, okay, um, that's him. Featherston Rover star Missy Tyler Papa has signed a new one-year deal with the club. The 35-year-old Salon International has spent the last two seasons with the championship side. Not much to add to that, really. Fair play. I didn't realise he's quite that old. Yeah, he's been around forever, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Like Fine. Good luck to him, yeah. He's aging. He's still doing the job at that Fine level. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. OK, uh, Witness Vikings, then we'll go back to them. They have announced that Tom Armstrong will be leaving the club at the end of this season to join the Toronto Wolfpack. Armstrong is 27 and joined Witness from the Lee Centurions this season, playing 11 times for the club. Witness granted his request for an early release from his contract to pursue the opportunity to play in Canada next season. Lee player joining Toronto, shall we? Yeah, the, the band is... Getting more and more back together. Yeah, really are getting going by, by, aren't yeah. they? I think if they could force through some sort of visa for Jamie Acton, that he might get dragged over there as well. I think uh, I think my and Richard will be playing for him. And Probably, yeah. Everyone, That's yeah. That's it. It's rolling back the years. Okay, speaking of someone who, well, has got plenty of years to roll back, Banker Kane will continue his playing career with York City Knights next season while taking up a part-time role at Hull KR's commercial department. The 34-year-old has scored 77 tries in 229 appearances for the Robins and has been a huge Huge fan favourite during his two spells at the club. Big, big signing for York City Knights. Yeah, it's a, it's a headline grabber. Mm. Uh, hopefully he can play plenty of games for them and put in the same sort of passion yeah. that he's put in in, uh, in his spells at Hull KR and Wakefield in the Super League because mm. he's, uh, yeah, and, and not the same sort of passion that he puts in, like, on, on the streets because... On the streets... Yes, yes he's, he's, but he's, he's, whilst at times had courted controversy, he's been quiet recently, hasn't he? Yes, of he's course he has, yeah. You know, and, you know, past. it's it's a, it's a big a big name to join that, that club. Yes. On another League One line, actually, to add in, Feka Palliasina is hanging up his boots mm. after a year at Doncaster at the end of this season. So that's another player who's enjoyed a, a long spell in Super League with yeah. a little jaunt over to France in the middle, but... Um, yeah, so well done to him as well yeah. on a career. He's a cult favourite at Wigan, isn't he, Fekka? He, he certainly was in his in his <laughs> day, yeah, for sure. It's, well, it's that old classic, isn't it? Yeah. Either have big air or a big long amount of vowels in your name and everyone's going <laughs> to think you're every, a wealthy. Yeah, everyone loves else. you. Speaking of people who've got big air and a large amount of vowels on their name, before we go to the end, finally, I read a very interesting piece about Epilahami Loaki this week and what he's been up to um, since he left the Bradford Bulls. Braiding. Is uh, there? No, he actually works as a social worker now. Wow. Down in, in New Zealand. I can't even remember exactly which town. Uh, but he's working with uh, young men who are struggling with depression after he got over not only the tragic death of his brother, Sion Larkey, um, but also went through a period of depression himself. So I thought about it um, a couple of times this week. It was a lovely story. It was a good, good story to read. And it kind of shone a bit of light on... What must be going through some players' minds when we as fans are uh, kind of castigating slagging them, them off. slagging them right off? Which you know, I was I was one of the Lalaki bashers during his time at the Bulls. Um, we just goes to show there's more than one dimension to people, and it was it was lovely and life affirming to read that he's he's taken his personal struggles and parlayed them into into a career where he can hopefully affect some some change and help some other young men in that particular part of the world. For sure. And finally, following an independent accreditation process which monitors the performance and progression of 13 junior development programmes, a record eight clubs have been assessed as outstanding in 2017, three more than last year. Lee Dryner, St Helens, Warrington, Witness Vikings and Wigan Warriors have retained their outstanding rating and have also been joined by the Catalan Dragons, City of Hull Academy and Huddersfield Giants. An evaluation of outstanding represents a level of performance which exemplifies best practice and implies that these very high levels of performance are sustainable and will be maintained. All 13 academies have been awarded licences, uh, which is funded by the Super League, to run for four years 
through to 2020 and are measured against that and their current practice. Clubs not giving an outstanding rating were the Bradford Bulls, who require improvement, Castleford, London and Newcastle, who are all rated as good, and Wakefield Trinity, who also require improvement. It's good, isn't it, that so many academies are progressing. Um, it, I mean, even a lot of the stuff around sort of Bradford and Wakefield and stuff was was there was a lot of positivity yeah. in the sort of commentaries that I read about about these ratings. It's just mm. I think facilities and kind of funding are a yeah. little bit down in some of those areas, yeah. um, and probably some of the criticisms about things could be labelled at the clubs for kind of the whole off field setup um, yeah. as well. But yeah, with the extra people, Catalan obviously are fairly new to the um, the competition mm. uh, in terms of having a regular team playing regular games at this level, and they managed to make the semi finals this year. So that's good. The City of Hull Academy, that's obviously a strange situation because of the two clubs coming together trying to work things through, mm. and that's taken some settling down. And I think obviously this kind of thing supports the work, the choices that they've made, and the work they're doing there. Definitely. Um, so, so it's really good to see, obviously, like, me and Liam were having a chat on the way to the game today, actually sort of running through all the squads in Super League and thinking who's bringing through the most youngsters that are homegrown. Mm. And most of the teams now are, are start, you're starting to see more and more. And, and I think that's a good thing. Of course. It's like money dries up, maybe, or availability of overseas players is, is lesser with a higher salary cap down under or what have you. But... Mm. It's uh, it's good to see because it it's, it only strengthens the player pool available because even if Leeds Rhinos or Wigan Warriors or Castleford or St Helens are producing to the pro- prolific levels they always have, players might not get in the top level size at these top level clubs, mm. but it means the game has got a good grounding to move does. forward with yeah. players who've had a good education in the game. Yeah. And one of the key things about these accreditations is what are they doing for these young men as people as mm. well as players and uh, giving them educational opportunities and stuff like that and the links that all these clubs are now getting with um, educational establishments in their communities and stuff can only be encouraged because rugby league is a short career if you make it to the top let alone if you cut adrift at an earlier stage mm. no it's fantastic and, and again it augurs well for the continued development of the game if we're starting to get our own house in order and, and you know grow our own vegetables if you want um, we're going to be in a better position for it moving forward aren't we? Yeah and let's hope that more academies can pop up in, in France and mm. Toronto can do something about it as well and and then we really have a sort of talent pool to draw from and these clubs that are maybe going to be looking into bringing in academies or improving their academies have got Eight examples yep. of who they need to tap up and have a chat to. Exactly. We can all share best practice on that one, Carly, for the, for the overall benefit of the game, you would hope. Yeah. There you go. Okay, that's the news from around the world of rugby league. Let's take a look back now at round four of the Super 8s. Okay, Mark, round four of the Super 8s. Then we'll start on Thursday night down at a partial Headingley uh, where Leeds Rhinos beat the whole FC Hangover team by 38 points to 26 in front of 13,219. Oh, it was refereed by James Child. Uh, but we'll get to that. Well, um, I before we go into the fan reviews, mm. how bizarre was it? The camera. Yeah. The, just. What do you mean, the Instagram? No, the the camera, oh, the camera angle, angle. Of the game. Yes, it's um, I, I, we're, the, we're the hidden victims of the uh, of the South Stand, aren't we? The people with the Sky TV subscription. You can't slag off the uh, the the having it that way around if there's a building side going on on the other side. But I just sort of had it in my head that they still fashion some sort of broadcasting point on the South Stand side right. of the ground, and I wouldn't have to get my whole head around this watching the game backwards. It's, it was a bit bizarre, wasn't it? But, <laughs> um, but plenty of points on the field. What did, uh, what did the fans have to say? Tyler Cass fan said, Great entertainment for the neutral, but loads of talking points for podcasters and those with a vested interest. <laughs> 
Heroic from Hull, but the short turnaround after Wembley caught up with them on the hour and along came the errors and bad decisions. Leeds looking strong for the run-in and a home semi is almost secured. Yep. Um, AK Steel 69. I like these ones. He says, if the gods of good fortune influenced Hull's win last week, they took their ounce of flesh at Headingley. It was a frustrating game which ended with both coaches face down on the pitch, beating their fists and feet into the ground like two-year-olds in Asda. Ellis and Manu were immense and Burrow should be banned. Hull showed enough to suggest that the cup alone will not scratch the itch this year we shouldn't fear anyone we'll talk more broadly about all the decisions and stuff later on but Mm. Burrow uh, because AK's said he should be banned I think Burrow will get a grade B and then let get 